Hi and welcome to Jamie DeRoy and Friends. To start us off this week, we have Fool for Love, written by Pulitzer Prize winner Sam Shepard. It's directed by David Aachen and it stars Tony Award winner Nina Arianda and Sam Rockwell. Also in the cast, Tom Pelfrey and Gordon Joseph Weiss. Pulled up in a seedy hotel on the edge of the Mojave Desert, two former lovers unpack the deep secrets and dark desires of their tangled relationship. Manhattan Theater Club's production of Fool for Love plays through December 6th at the Samuel J. Friedman Theater. I came to see if you were all right. Well, I don't need you! Okay. Fine. I'm going. Don't go! What am I gonna do? Huh? What am I supposed to do? Oh, you know. What? You're gonna erase me. What are you talking about? You're either gonna erase me or you're gonna have me erased. Why would I want that? Are you kidding me? Because I'm in the way. Don't be stupid. Hey, I am smarter than you are and you know it. I can smell your thoughts before you even think them. Hey, I'm, I'm trying to take care of you. Right. No, you're not. You're just guilty. You're gutless and guilty. Good combination. You're taking her out to the movies, right? Yeah. So you pick the movie. The guy picks the movie. The guy's always supposed to pick the movie. <laughs> yeah, but I want to take her something she doesn't want to see. How do you know what she wants to see? I don't. See, that's the reason I can't decide. <laughs> you know, I mean, what if I take her something she's already seen before? That's the whole point, Martin. The reason you're taking her out to the movies is to see something she hasn't seen before. Oh. The reason you're taking her out to the movies is because you just want to be with her. Right? You just want to be close to her. I mean, you can take her just about anywhere. I guess. Yeah. I mean, after a while, you probably wouldn't have to take her out at all. You could just hang around here. Well, what will we do here? You could uh, tell each other stories. Stories? Yeah. I don't know any stories. Make them up. Well, that'd be lying, wouldn't it? No, no, lying's when you believe it's true. If you already know it's a lie, then it's not lying. I thought you were supposed to be a fantasist. Isn't that basically the deal with you? You dream things up? Isn't that true? I don't know. You don't know? Well, if you don't know, I don't know who the hell else does. I want to show you something. Something real, okay? Something actual. Sure. Take a look at that picture on the wall over there. You see that? Take a look at that. You see it? Yeah. You know who that is? I'm not sure. Barbara Mandrell. That's who that is, Barbara Mandrell. You heard of her? Sure. Well, would you believe me if I told you I was married to her? <laughs> no. Well, see, now, that's the difference right there. That's realism. I am actually married to Barbara Mandrell in my mind. <laughs> Can you understand that? Sure. Good. Glad we have an understanding. The Roundabout Theatre Company presents Old Times. It's written by Tony Award winner Harold Pinter and directed by Tony Award winner Douglas Hodge, who we're used to seeing more as an actor. And it brings to the stage Clive Owen, Eve Best, and Kelly Riley. Both Clive Owen and Kelly are making their Broadway debuts. In old times, Dealey and Kate are visited by a mysterious friend from Kate's past. What begins as a trip down memory lane quickly becomes something more. The revival of old times plays at Roundabout's American Airlines Theater through November 29th. And now from the public theater, which has given us in the past a chorus line, fun home, and Hamilton, is now presenting barbecue. It's directed by Kent Gash and written by Robert O'Hara. It's an amazing cast, a huge cast to be honest, and they're all terrific.
the story, well, I can't really tell it to you because I'll spoil it. It's full of surprises. It's wonderful. I just suggest that you see it, and it only plays through November 1st. To highlight a few of the shows at Feinstein's 54 Below, we have Carrie Butler, who wraps up her run there with one show left on October 21st. Her musical director, Seth Radetzky. Barb Younger and John McDaniel come together for the music of the Beatles. It's going to be at 54 Below for two runs, October 28th through the 31st, and then again next year, January 13th and 14th. Also at Feinstein's 54 Below is fellow Pittsburgher, but more importantly from Law and Order, my friend Tamara Tooney. She'll be appearing at the club on October 21st and 22nd and November 11th and 12th. Her show is entitled Legends from the Berg. On October 20th through the 23rd, Jared Spector and Kelly Barrett bring their show to the club. They celebrate music's greatest marriages. On November 11th through the 13th, a very special show will take place at Feinstein's 54 Below. Our Guy Cy, The Songs of Cy Coleman. And it stars three Tony Award winners, Judy Kay, Randy Graff, and Katie Hoffman. I had a chance to sit down with Judy Kay to talk a little bit about Cy Coleman. And she was also a guest recently on Jamie Doroy and Friends, so we'll show you that clip from Birdland. Well, tell us about On the 20th Century when you did it, because that was an exciting time. It was an out-of-body experience, the whole thing. I, it was, you know, beshert, as my people would say. It's sort of... I, I, I was hired, I had auditioned for Hal Prince, I was told right up front there was nothing for me in the show, that it was all cast, and so I went in and had one of the best auditions I'd ever done in my life, because there was nothing really at stake, I just wanted to sing for him, and I did Glitter and Be Gay of all things, and then I read the script, and I, and I was funny, they were laughing, I thought, well, this is the kiss of death, and I went home, and sure enough, a, f a message was waiting for me to, uh, would I understudy, and I... I thought, oh my God, wow, understudy. The job of understudy is just one of the hardest things in the world, and I had done it only in college and had my heart kind of broken. I mean, I'd, it was a terrible experience for me, which was not emblematic of what the job really is, but it, I, I thought to be an understudy is you're waiting, in order to do your job, you're waiting for somebody else to, to have a misfortune. To, you know, maybe you're lucky and they got another job or they're, you know, but it could be a something, you know, they're sick or something terrible happened and they're, oh, is that what I want to be when I grow up? <clears throat> so I, I was, I turned down the job and I turned it down twice. And then they was offered a third time and a friend of mine said, if you turn on The Tonight Show someday and the person who took that job is on there, you're just going to be so angry at yourself. Uh. <laughs> really? And I, so I said, okay. And then I arrived first day of rehearsal like a tourist. I had a, one of those cameras slung over my neck and a, this huge wall and sack I was carrying. And I was. I remember those. Oh, well, it was the smaller one. It was like, oh. And, I, and, and I, I showed up at the first day of rehearsal like that. And then things just started happening, you know? Uh, things I could never have imagined in my wildest. Uh, it was a, an amazing experience. I loved, I loved working with Madeline and I learned so much from her and, and then, you know, she, she departed and, and I, I wound up getting the part. It was like crazy. I was at my age. I thought, because I'd gone on like nine times for her as her understudy because she was having some problems and uh, I thought I was going to wind up doing matinees. I thought, oh wow, well that would be neat since I never thought I was ever even going to go on in this part. I really yeah. had it because that's what you have to do. You have to convince yourself that you're never going on but if you go on you're going to you know, do a good job. And I thought, well, I'm not, I'm not ever going to do this. And then, and then, 
who I was given the job, and it was amazing. It was like, it was a fairy tale. Oh, absolutely. I and mean, I'm going on and on about this. No, but it, 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 was, it was almost like Broadway history, I think. Well, it probably is, because right after it happened, I got a, I got a, a note, I got a, tel te remember telegrams? I, yes. I was getting telegrams, telegram from Shirley MacLaine, and she, because it, it had been in that theater, the St. James, where she had her experience with pajama, pajama game. game. And, and she was ready to hand in her notice the day that they, she ended up going on stage. She had her notice in her back pocket. That I did not know. Yeah. She, she never told me that. She did not well, tell me that. Well, it's in Broadway, The Golden Age. Wow. She told that story. That's quite something. <laughs> um, Think of me. Think of me fondly when we've said goodbye. Remember me every so often. Promise me you try. On that day, that not so distant day, if you ever find a the opera. Well, I, I guess Hugh filled you in as much as humanly possible, but uh, <laughs> yes, well, that, that show, that was my first chandelier. <laughs> it was good to me. It was very good to me. I, I think I have to keep finding shows with chandeliers. I, uh, I don't think I'll be riding any more of them. I think my, my riding of chandeliers those days are probably behind me somewhere, but uh, anyway, that beautiful little little ditty, it's one of the first songs in the show. And as Carlotta Giudicelli, the prima donna a saluta of the Paris Opera, I got to sing about um, 16, 17 bars, eight times a week. And eight times a week, right at that point, the scenery would fall on my head, and I was never permitted to finish the song. So. <laughs> Tonight, or this afternoon, or whatever this is, for the first time in 2015, I'm gonna try to finish the song. Think of me, think of me fondly. When we've said goodbye, remember me every so often. Promise me you'll try. We never said our love was ever green or as unchanged. me that sometimes you will think of me think of all the things we've shared
Cafe Carlisle, Alexa Ray Joel comes back to the club and plays there from October 20th through October 31st, Halloween. At the Metropolitan Room, artist-in-residence Julie Budd brings her newest show to the club on October 21st and December 10th. It's entitled, They Wrote the Songs, Remembering Mr. Sinatra and His Friends. Here's a look at Julie Budd on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Julie Budd. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that sway. Do act, 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 do act. It don't mean a thing, all you gotta do is sing. Do act, 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 do act. No difference if it's sweet or hot. Just give that rhythm everything you've got. What? Don't mean a thing if it ain't got that sway. Do I 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 Makes no difference if it's sweet or hot. Joseph Machia and Cabaret Cares present a benefit for Help is on the Way on October 25th. It's happy 80th birthday, Johnny Mathis, and it's hosted by Frank Dane. Musical director is Kathleen Landis. It has a stellar cast, including Stacey Sullivan, Lenny Watts, Eric Comstock and Barbara Fasano, Jeff Harner, Tanya Holt, Marie Ann Maringolo, and Kurt Peterson. There's something very special coming up at Birdland on Monday, November 2nd. A show entitled, We're Gonna Have to Ask You to Leave. It's hosted by Michael Urey and Celia Keenan-Bolger. It's a benefit for the American Cancer Society. The cast includes four-time Tony Award winner Boyd Gaines, two-time Tony Award winner Christian Borrow, and from Hand to God, Sarah Stiles. Another benefit that we're very excited about is the 25th anniversary of Jamie DeRoy and Friends. It will take place on Monday, November 9th over at John Jay College. We have a stellar cast joining us for the event, including Joy Behar, Robert Guccioli, Larry Gatlin, Jay Johnson, Michelle Lee, and Luba Mason. Here is Luba Mason performing all that jazz. Come on, babe, why don't we paint the town? And all that jazz, I'm gonna rouge my knees and roll my stockings down. And all that jazz, start the car, I know I won't be spy. I wear the gin is cold, but the piano's hot. It's just a noisy hall where there's a nightly brawl and all. Jay. Oh, slick your hair and wear your buckled shoes. And all that jazz, I hear that Father Dip is gonna blow the blues. And all that jazz, hold on, hand, we're gonna bunny hide. I bought some We shake apart and want a brand new start to do that jazz. Oh, you're gonna see your shiva shimmy shake and all that jazz. Oh, you're gonna shimmy till your goddess break and all that jazz. Queer for all of 
Company presents through November 8th Robert Guccioli starring in Rothschilds and Sons. It's written by Sheldon Harnick, Jerry Bach, Sherman Yellen, and directed by Jeffrey Moss. Also in the cast of Eleven is Glory Crampton. You're not going to want to miss this production. It's already been extended through November 8th and plays at St. Peter's Church. The Gin Game, which won the Pulitzer Prize in 1978, is written by D.L. Coburn, directed by Leonard Foglia, and it stars Tony Award winners James Earl Jones and Cicely Tyson. The Gin Game is so funny and so poignant, and it's a chance to see two great actors on stage together. Don't miss it. It plays at the John Golden Theater. Primary Stages presents the New York premiere of perfect arrangement. In this play, which is set in the 50s, we have two gay couples marrying each other so they can fool the world. City Center's annual gala, they present a concert version of Annie Get Your Gun, written by Irving Berlin and Herbert Ann Dorothy Fields. It's directed by Tony Award winner John Rando and stars Megan Hilty, Andy Carl, Chuck Cooper, Brad Oscar, Ron Raines, and Judy Kay. Annie Get Your Gun will run only two nights, October 27th and 28th. The first night will be part of the City Center Gala. New Jersey Performing Arts Center presents another in its American Songbook series, hosted by Ted Chapin. This takes place on October 25th and 26th. Performers include Christine Ebersol, Jesse Mueller, and Stephen Schwartz, along with Gerald Spector, Seth Radetzky, K.T. Sullivan and Jeff Harner, Marilyn May, and Katherine Russell. To close our show, a two-character musical so charming, Daddy Longlegs. It plays at the Davenport Theater, and it stars Megan McGinnis and Paul Alexander Nolan. Music and lyrics by Paul Gordon, written and directed by John Caird, and based on the novel by Gene Webster, and inspired by the 1955 Fred Astaire film, Daddy Longlegs. Here are some scenes. He went on about Melville and Whitman. I'm floating on air, and P.S. I blow. When he offered his arm And we walked under fair weather skies And oh, how I wish that you'd been with us too And I knew the color of your eyes Let me show you my Manhattan It's captivating The New York Times at your door Happiness is the secret. The secret of happiness is the secret. The secret.